if you have a diagnosis, then you need to start thinking about the cause. Yep. And in dementia, it's a lot of things. It's, it's like we talked about. It could be the yep. metals. It could be the insulin resistance. It could be the nutritional deficiencies. Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Mark Hyman, and welcome to a special episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. That's pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, a a place for conversations that matter. And if you ever have memory issues, you better listen to this podcast because it'll help you a lot. And this special episode is called House Call. And in this series, I sit down with the Ultra Wellness Center's physician, medical director, Dr. Elizabeth Bowen, who's been my colleague in practicing functional medicine for decades now. Uh, she's one of the most extraordinary doctors I know. I go to her when I'm sick, and and uh, she has literally, um, you know, been the pillar of the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts, where we've seen thousands and thousands of patients from all over the world helping them with all kinds of problems that no one else can figure out. And today we're going to talk about memory and dementia, which is a terrifying thing for people yeah. because okay, you get a heart attack, whatever, you're still you. You get mm-hmm. dementia, you're not you anymore. And it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the most prevalent conditions rising and rising. We now see, you know, uh, at a rate of about 5 million people in America with Alzheimer's. It's going to go to 14 million soon. It's global. Mm-hmm. There's a hundred million, couple of hundred million people around the world with this. It's pretty terrifying. And uh, the care of these patients is just so burdensome on the families. It's so costly. It costs more to take care of an Alzheimer's patient than it does to take care of someone with heart disease or cancer. People just don't realize that. So yeah. we're going to talk about this. Um, you know, how how much do we really have an impact on this disease? Can we do anything about it? And so, it's such a great question, Mark, and such a great place to start, right? Because it's so, kind of hopeless. You know, like as a neurologist, what, the, the classical joke about neurology is diagnose and adios. Right. You have Alzheimer's, nothing I can do. See you later. Get your affairs in order. Goodbye. And have a nice rest of your life. And uh, that's it. But actually, we know there's so much we can do, right? There's so much we can do that impacts our, our, our health and our body and definitely our brain health. So we can have a huge impact by taking good care of ourselves, by making the right food choices, by exercise, by meditation, by getting good sleep. And there's a lot of times that we can find some imbalances in the body mm-hmm. when we look deeper mm-hmm. that can have a huge impact on somebody's cognition and on their memory. And, and, and that's really exciting. It's so exciting, you know, because for years we were told there's nothing you can do. Right. And there's been literally billions of dollars spent on hundreds and hundreds of studies Mm -hmm. that have all failed. When these drugs work, the benefit is that maybe they'll delay getting into a nursing home by three or four months. Like that's a success, right? Right. Right. Uh, and and, And some of them just don't work at all. Like the main drug we use, Aricept, the studies show it doesn't even work at all. Right. The Menda might help a little bit. And that's okay, but why have they failed? Because we're looking in the wrong place for the solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we're not looking at the root causes. We're trying to deal with the problem after it's already happened or out uh, at the downstream on the effects of it and not really dealing with the drivers of this problem. And in functional medicine, we really look at that. And what's been exciting to me over the last few years, Liz, is that there's been a number of studies that have come out that have shown that personalized approaches work, that lifestyle interventions work. The finger study, which was published from Europe, showed that by simple aggressive lifestyle interventions, diet, exercise, stress reduction, treating risk factors, like if you have prediabetes or whatever, had a significant impact on slowing and even reversing memory loss. Yeah. A new study just published this recent last October by Richard Isaacson in New York City showed that you actually could, by personalizing treatment, for people's nutritional status, for their metabolic status, for yeah. uh, their lifestyle treatments. You could literally stop or reverse memory loss and Alzheimer's in these patients, which is yeah. just should be headline news, right? but uh, you don't hear about it. And that's what's so fun about doing functional medicine because that's what our focus is, right? That's what we're looking to do. We're looking to, to personalize our treatment plan for that individual patient. We, we gather all of their history and figure out for that person what may be out of balance for their body, what may be causing the inflammation in their, in their body, what may be causing their problems with their cognition. And we can then personalize and figure out where do they need to focus? Mm. What do we need to focus on with that person? Mm. And it makes a huge difference in terms of, of, for so many people, in terms of how they feel. You know, years ago, I, I um, practicing functional medicine at Canyon Ranch, I, I just was treating all these people for body issues, right? Mm-hmm. So for their gut or their 
you know, heavy metals or their metabolic syndrome, their prediabetes, mm-hmm. and uh, nutritional deficiencies, and folate, and B12, and I would find all these physical things wrong with people, and then I would treat them, and then they'd report to me, my memory's better, mm-hmm. my depression's gone, my panic attacks aren't anymore happening, I have the ability to focus and pay attention better, and I'm like, what is going on here? And right. I wasn't you know, focused on treating the brain, but as a side effect of fixing the body, the brain would get better. And that's when I wrote The Ultra Mind Solution. Yes. Which Phenomenal is how book. the body affects the brain. And I and it was like over 10 years ago. Uh, now, uh, and we're just sort of catching up with what I was observing back then. Mm-hmm. And when, even the literature back then, you could see there was evidence that this was true. Again, it just takes 17, 20 years for scientific advances to end up in clinical medicine. But right. functional medicine shortens that gap. And I remember this one patient, and we're going to talk about your patients soon, but I remember this one patient I had who what was this so sort of striking. He came in uh, with his wife, and he was a CEO of a major you know, company. Uh, it was his family business. He was unable to function. He was 70 years old. He basically was depressed and cognitively impaired, memory loss, basically sitting at home in a corner doing nothing and has had you know mood changes because a lot of times people with mm-hmm. memory issues of dementia get a lot of mood changes so their personality changes nobody wanted to be around him his mm-hmm. grandkids didn't and i'm like well i've never treated this before but i'm going to just try to get you physically healthy and see how it affects your brain yeah because at that time there wasn't a book on the end of alzheimer's or any of this stuff and uh Although David Perlmutter, you know, talked a lot about how to treat the brain with neurology and we really learned a lot from him. Yes. And this patient turned out he lived in Pittsburgh. He had super high levels of mercury because, yeah. and he also had a lot of dental fillings. And in Pittsburgh, all of my patients from Pittsburgh have super high mercury. Oh, interesting. And the reason is, I believe, is that it's the steel capital of America right. and they use coal for the steel plants. And coal has mercury and lead Mm -hmm. and it's used on everything they put it on the fields they Mm -hmm. use coal ash for instead of like sand on the ice icy roads in the winter they'll use coal ash so it's Uh everywhere right and and he also had uh pre-diabetes which was undiagnosed he wasn't really overweight but he had kind of a little belly and he also had severe irritable bowel for 30 years it was on stelazine which is a sort of anti-psychotic you know, relax, like tranquilizer, basically, uh, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Um, and he also had severe folate and B12 deficiency. He had high levels so of homocysteine he had a lot going on, huh? and methylmonic acid. So he had gut issues. He had vitamin deficiencies that affect yeah. the brain. He had heavy metals. He had prediabetes. Yeah. And he also had genetics that set him up for this. So he measured his genes, yep. uh, something called APOE, and if you have ApoE4, you're much higher risk for dementia, and you also can't get rid of metal. So he had ApoE double four, which mm-hmm. is the worst risk. Uh, he also had uh, genes that affect his folate metabolism, like MTHFR. So he he wasn't able to process the folate he was getting from his diet. So he he was sort of functionally deficient in these nutrients, uh, and he had terrible gut issues. And so we looked at all these things, and I just treated you know his diet to get rid of the insulin resistance. I treated yep. his gut with the five R program, which we've talked about on the podcast to reset his gut. I gave him the nutrients he needed in the right doses. I detoxified him from heavy metals. And he literally came back to life. And That's beautiful. I treated him for years and years and his memory was good. His mood was good. He was able to go back to work and function running his company. Yep. And you, know, just, you just don't see that with traditional medicine. And I think you bring up a really important point that you know sometimes people want to know the underlying root cause the one thing right they want to know what is the thing that's causing this problem mm. you know it this cognitive decline yeah. for example or whatever problem that person has but many times many times it's it's a little bit of multiple different things yeah. that come together right yeah. so he had uh, t- six different things that you were focused on and they were each contributing to his yeah. cognitive decline. Right. And so you have to work on all of those different pieces for him to start to feel optimally better. So his unique genetic susceptibilities made those things worse for him. Absolutely, right. So, right. so not everybody with prediabetes gets dementia. Not everybody with right. mercury gets dementia. Not everybody with gut issues gets dementia, right? But when you add all the up, it actually mm-hmm. all makes sense. And I think, you know, we are... are 
often really focused on the pathology in medicine, right? We yeah. focus on the amyloid or the tau proteins, all these things that we see in the brains of people with Alzheimer's. But it turns out that um, those are so downstream as a consequence right. of all these other factors that nobody's treating. Yes. Right. And and we know that memory issues and the brain issues, whether it's depression or autism or ADD or Alzheimer's, are inflammation in the brain. Right. And and there's amazing studies that people have terrible amyloid in the brain, but their genes for inflammation are different and they don't actually produce inflammation and they die completely cognitively intact with a brain full of amyloid. And everybody's all these billions of dollars of drug studies on amyloid just have failed because we're just going downstream instead right. of upstream, which is what functional medicine does. Which is so fun to practice, right? Where it you're is. spending that time to really get to know your patient, get their personal history, figure out for them what are the what are the things we need to remove, what are the tax we need to take away to help their body heal. Yeah. And um and, and I think you're right. There's there's so many situations where we see people have imp huge improvements in their mem memory and cognition when we address what are their underlying root causes. Hi everyone, hope you're enjoying the episode. Before we continue, we have a quick message from Dr. Mark Hyman about his new company, Pharmacy, and their first product, the 10-Day Reset. Hey, it's Dr. Hyman. Do you have FLC? What's FLC? It's when you feel like crap. It's a problem that so many people suffer from and often have no idea that it's not normal or that you can fix it. I mean, you know the feeling. It's when you're super sluggish, your digestion's off, you can't think clearly, or you have brain fog, or you just feel run down. Can you relate? I know most people can. But the real question is what the heck do we do about it? Well, I hate to break the news, but there's no magic bullet. FLC isn't caused by one single thing, so there's not one single solution. However, there is a systems-based approach, a way to tackle the multiple root factors that contribute to FLC, and I call that system the 10-Day Reset. The 10-Day Reset combines food, key lifestyle habits, and targeted supplements to address FLC straight on. It's a protocol that I've used with thousands of my community members to help them get their health back on track. It's not a magic bullet. It's not a quick fix. It's a system that works. If you want to learn more and get your health back on track, Click on the button below or visit GetPharmacy.com. That's Get Pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y.com. Now back to this week's episode. Like I had a 75-year-old gentleman who came to see me and he was a professor. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was, you know, his, his brain was really important to him. You know, he spent a lot of time up there in his brain and, it, and he noticed that it wasn't working as well. He was having a hard time with, with paying attention to when he was reading, he was getting lost when he was driving, and, um, and, and he, was, he was really frustrated and scared. And so we started to get his history from him. Mm. And, you know, I got a good detailed history and one of the first things I noticed, even outside of the history, was we did his anthropometrics, right? So he comes What's into that? the office, right? He comes <laughs> into the office and we measure his blood pressure, we measure his weight. But in our office, we also measure the waist to hip ratio. At the yeah. Ultra Wellness Center, we always are looking at that waist to hip ratio, right? So we get so much information when we look at somebody's waist to hip ratio, because if you're holding on to too much weight around the belly, belly fat, that belly fat, that visceral adiposity causes a lot of inflammation in the body. And it's a sign, it's a signal to us. That's all the organ fat. It's yeah. a different kind of fat than the fat on your butt. Yep. on your legs, right? It's, right? it's really dangerous and drives so much inflammation. And right? we can't just liposuction it away, no. right? Because it's deep in there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, that's so funny you mentioned that because I have a slide that I use in my talks, which was of a study in the New England Journal of a woman who had mm -hmm. 40 pounds of liposuction yep. who was really overweight. And they did a scan of her belly before and after. And they found that, yeah, all the subcutaneous fat was taken out, yep. but all the visceral fat was there and none of her blood markers changed. Right. With loss of 40 pounds of fat, not her blood pressure, not her inflammation levels, not her insulin, blood sugar, cholesterol, nothing changed. Right. Because we know it's that deep visceral fat that's so pro-inflammatory in the body. What's visceral? It's the deep, organ it's the fat. organ fat, yeah. right? That's deep in our belly. And we know that it, it's not just sitting there. It's, it's an active endocrine organ. It is producing, it's producing uh, inflammatory markers. It's producing cytokines. It, it, it itself is increasing inflammation mm. in the body. So your fat cells are not just there holding up your pants. They're, no. They're, they're actually really... dynamic and they're producing hormones or producing inflammation and it's yep. affecting everything in your body, including everything. your brain. 
including your brain. And you were just mentioning earlier about how, you know, uh, cognitive decline and memory loss is often an inflammatory disorder. And so we did his waist to hip ratio. And for men, you want to be less than, in general, you want to be less than 0.9, your waist to hip ratio. I'm more that, severe. I say 0.8. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's a, it depends on somebody's ethnicity where yeah, you know yeah. how strict we want to be, but at least less than 0.9. And he was like 1.04, so his mm -hmm. his he was holding on to too much weight around his belly, and and so we said I said okay, this is an area I know I have to focus on because even if even if somebody can't do tons and tons of of a workup and tons and tons of testing, we know, we know that that mm -hmm. insulin resistance, that weight gain around the belly, that metabolic syndrome, that's pre -diabetes. that prediabetes that's associated with, with that visceral adiposity, right? So that weight gain around our belly is associated with what we call prediabetes or metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance. We know that that is associated with dementia or yeah. memory loss. But prediabetes causes pre-dementia. Yes. So you don't even have to have diabetes to have a problem. Right. And if you have diabetes, your risk of dementia is four times greater than the average person. Right. Which is staggering. Staggering. And so people, fact, especially since the fact that 75% of us are overweight. Right. And 42% now are obese. And, and it's and, all connected. Right. And at least half of us have, the, have metabolic syndrome, right, in this country. You know, one out of two people in the country have prediabetes or diabetes. Mm -hmm. that, and people <laughs> are, are always like, oh, is there anything I can do to prevent this dementia? Yes. And this is, this is an area that we really, we really can attack. It's, it, it makes a huge difference when you work to get down uh, the waist dip ratio. And so what we did with... We, and people don't connect the belly and the brain. I mean... Right. The, Belly fat, the bigger your belly, the worse your brain off. Brain is off. Like, right? Yep. You're, you're more likely to have Alzheimer's or you're, you're actually literally shrink your brain. Yep. The bigger your belly, the smaller your brain. Right. They're <laughs> calling it type 3 diabetes, yep. right? Is yep. That is, is dementia or Alzheimer's disease because we know there's such a connection with how well the insulin works in the brain. So it's, it's really critical that people understand that there's so much you can do yes. by just improving your waist to hip so, ratio. So your professor's diet wasn't terrible, but... No, he didn't, he didn't but, think it was terrible. It was kind of high you know, starch and sugar. Right? right. He's like, he said, well, we always ask. We always have people actually fill out their diet diet. Yeah. But I always ask and people are, they're like, oh, no, it's not bad. We're trying to be healthy. You know, he was, he had the money and he was educated, but for breakfast, he, he wasn't might have junk a, food, but he was, no, but he, was but he might have a piece of toast. He'd be like, well, it was wheat toast for breakfast with my coffee. And then at lunch, he might grab a turkey sandwich and had a salad. And then at dinner, he might have pasta with his, his, his fish or chicken. So he didn't have an awful diet, but for him, he had gained like 30 pounds over the last 40 years or so, yeah. and he had gained it, as we mentioned, in his belly, which is a sign to me, which is a sign to me that says, okay, he's more carbohydrate intolerant. He's got this, he's got this metabolic syndrome, which means he's not tolerating these carbohydrates that well anymore. And that's where we need to focus from a diet perspective. Yeah. So, so just to be clear about carbohydrates. So like broccoli is a carbohydrate, but that's you're not true. talking about broccoli. No. So plant foods are all carbohydrates. That's what they are. Yep. Any plant food, whether it's you know orange or broccoli yep. or you know a potato, yep. but they're not all the same, right? Right. And certain carbohydrates are super bad for your blood sugar and insulin. Others are great. Right. So, so I, I always just joke and I say carbohydrates are the most important food for health and longevity. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we need a plant-rich diet full of lots of colorful fruits and vegetables that are low in starch and sugar. But if people are yeah. eating potatoes and bread, which you think, oh, that's, you know, yep. that's fine, whole wheat bread, but actually that's worse for your blood sugar than table sugar. Yeah. <laughs> and sandwich bread and potatoes and pasta. And, you yep. know, it may not seem terrible, but if you are someone who's carbohydrate intolerant, which by the way, affects about 70% of Americans, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, then, yep. and then the ones who are overweight, uh, then you gotta deal with that. Right. And, and I always tell people, 
take away anything with flour in it, right? If it, even if it's gluten-free flour, because some people are like, well, it's gluten-free. But if, yeah. it's, if they've taken a grain and turned it into a flour, okay. right? Then like, a, like with pasta or, or bread, then it's something that's easily digested in your body and it causes your blood sugar to spike, which causes your insulin to spike. Yeah. And then that insulin causes us to gain weight around the belly. And remember that it belly- makes you hungry and crave make, carbs. Oh, that's for sure, right? It and makes then, you lazy. Yep. So we think people are lazy, they don't exercise, they often feel like crap, so they don't want to exercise. So it's like a, a vicious circle from the food causing you to be yep. hungry and lazy, as opposed to yes. the other way around. The fact that you eat too much and you don't exercise enough causes weight gain. It's the other way around. Absolutely. And then that weight around the belly is causing inflammation in your body to go up. And that inflammation then is turning into, uh, um, the, for some people, dementia and, yeah. and cognitive decline, which was happening with this gentleman. Yeah. And, and so when we did further testing, we could see more things that went along with this waist to hip ratio being high. We saw that his his blood sugar was fine, like yeah. his blood sugar was fine, but his fasting insulin was high. Right. Right, so I always say, I, have, I always recommend people, have your doctor check your fasting insulin. Which, by the way, most doctors never do, they check your blood sugar. Right, right, right. right. And so his fasting insulin was, uh, was 15. Wow, that's high. It yeah. should be like less than five. Yeah, we like it less than five. You know, Not definitely. to brag, but mine is two. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew it was way too high. And we also saw the other things that we typically see in this situation, high triglycerides, low good cholesterol. You know, he, he had a lot of things that, high C-reactive protein. That's a marker of inflammation, Yep, right? which you can have your doctor check as well. Yeah. And all of this sort of came to say, okay, we've got to really focus on his pre-diabetes, on his insulin resistance, mm -hmm. metabolic syndrome, whatever mm -hmm. we want to call it, yeah. right? We, and so what we did is we shifted his diet and we, we pulled away those refined and processed carbohydrates. You know, we just focused on the non-starchy vegetables for his carbohydrate source, yeah. as you were and mentioning. More fat. And more fat, right? Let's talk right? about fat and the brain. Well, you know, we know the brain is, is, is fed by good, healthy fat. And the fat also really helps with balancing blood sugar. So, um, and the fat is like 60% of your brain is fat. And so a you lot need of to be omega three fats, right? Yeah. So we really focused on giving him more. We gave him fish oil as a supplement, but we focused on him getting more omega threes from his diet too, from ground flaxseed, um, from the fatty fish like sardines, which I love, salmon, and um, and really focused also on just giving him more fat in his diet, and um, that helped him. That is what helped him feel more satiated. Yeah, because when you eat fat, you feel full. Right, and so he wasn't hungry just, and right, he wasn't cravings. looking for food all the time. If yeah, people cut the starch and sugar and they don't eat the fat, they're gonna be hungry all the time. Right, right, so that really helped him, just it helped him balance his blood sugar. It, over time, he lost, um, he lost some of that 30 pounds. He lost most of the 30 pounds. He, we got him exercising because we know that can improve BDNF, that brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's like miracle growth for the brain, right? Yeah, yeah. And he really wasn't, you know, he's a, kind of a sedentary kind of guy. So we got him moving and exercising. And, um, and, and it, was, it was phenomenal. Just by lowering his insulin, lowering that waist circumference, getting him exercising, he saw a great improvement in terms of his energy and his memory, yeah, which is those, most important to him. I remember those studies were like, just walking prevents Alzheimer's. Right. Because it increases this BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, yep. which is stimulated by exercise. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we can we can also stimulate BDNF through um, intermittent fasting, which is kind of interesting. A more ketogenic diet, which is that mm -hmm. low carb, mm -hmm. higher fat mm -hmm. diet, mm -hmm. through meditation, mm -hmm. through the good healthy fats, the the, the omega three fats. So we can we can stimulate that BDNF. Meditation also does it. So you can yeah, either right? run or you can sit on your butt, and both do it if you <laughs> do the right thing. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So we, powerful. So mindfulness. so we really have to focus in on this because you know traditional doctors don't measure insulin. Right. They don't look at insulin. I mean, this is the most common condition period in medicine today, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And yet doctors don't know how to look for it and diagnose it or treat it, which is just stunning to me because yep. this is just basic. This isn't even just functional medicine, right? right? So we, the literature describes what this syndrome is, metabolic syndrome. It describes prediabetes. You can use a tape measure, your waist to hip ratio. Yep. You can look at your triglycerides. You can look at your good cholesterol. The good cholesterol goes down, the triglycerides go up. You can look at inflammation. Yep. You can look at insulin. If you wait till your blood sugar's up, it's too late. 
Yeah. By the time you're, your insulin, it's I mean, so I, much harder to reverse it I at that point. I had a patient who was like, I was really overweight and she had big, big belly. Yeah. And it was, it was like such an eye opening case for me because not only did I do a insulin, I did a glucose tolerance test also with insulin. Mm -hmm. So you give someone a load of sugar, equivalent of two yep. cokes, and you measure their blood sugar and insulin before and after one and two hours, and you see what happens. She had the most perfect blood sugar. She never mm -hmm. went up over 100. Yep. Her, her blood sugar was perfect. Yep. Uh, her A1C, which is the average blood sugar, was normal. But her insulin was like 200. Yeah. Not 15, right. not five, but like 200. 200. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And so she is just packing on this belly fat. Yep. Because the insulin, just everything she eats just turns to belly fat. Yep. And as you mentioned, people just feel so tired and lethargic. Yeah. yeah. So we need to really help them drop that insulin. Yes. And so it was just so easy to treat this patient. And I think with typical cases of, of memory issues, it's such a big factor. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the food is such a big factor. And I think the diet, we, you know, there's a lot of research showing like Mediterranean diets, for example, help prevent yep. Alzheimer's. They call it the MEN diet. Yep. Um, and it, you know, it's just basically things like salmon and greens yep. and chocolate. Olive and oil and olives olive oil. and they nuts. They even had white, red wine in there. Yep. <laughs> you know, and, and I think, uh, it, you know, we have so much power and people feel afraid and powerless about yep. memory loss and dementia. Like, feel, I can prevent heart disease and diabetes if I eat better and exercise. But they don't get that the brain is it's just connected to the body and you have tremendous control and power over what happens if you deal with all these variables. Absolutely. So, so the, other, um, the other thing I want to sort of talk about was... Um, you know, this this other case you had. Yeah. Uh, it was a woman who had memory issues and her brain was super foggy and wasn't having any energy and she got sick easily. So what was what was going on with her? Right. So she was around sixty and so she was kinda scared. She was scared that she was struggling with her memory and she, her she was having a hard time recalling things, you know, remembering that person's name or what was she supposed to be just doing or why am I in this room? And um and, and so she was she was, and she's like, I'm 60. I, you know, this is this is really scaring me. So I got a good detailed history on her, and I realized she's also been really sick a lot. Mm. You know, she was getting all the colds and flus that were going on. You know, I'm like, okay, now that's concerning. So we we did some testing on her, and we found out. And when I did an exam, right? When I did an exam, I saw that she had a mouthful of silver fillings. And so I, I got concerned, as you were mentioning earlier, we know that, that mercury is a neurotoxin, yeah. right? It can, cause, it can cause damage to the brain. Yeah. It, we also know it's a, it can cause damage to the immune system. Yeah. It can decrease the functioning of our immune system. And so we did this special test with her that looks at, it was a quick silver test that looks to see her mercury in her blood, how much of it was coming from the fillings. From the fillings. Right. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, there's such controversy about this and the yeah. dental groups go like, there's no issue, it's safe. But it's so funny to me that, you know, if you go to a dentist and you have fillings and they remove them from your mouth, they have to put them in a special toxic waste disposal system, mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to the EPA. So why is it safe to put in your mouth, but not to throw in the garbage? Right. <laughs> I don't get that. And, right. the, and the truth is that we know that it off gases, yes. that it, you grind your teeth or you chew and over and we think it's stable but it actually releases mercury slowly into the body yep. and it can be absorbed and cause all kinds of issues now some people are great at getting rid of it but others are terrible right and this kind of test you just don't get at your doctor you don't right we look at hair urine blood we see what's going on how you're detoxifying it's such a big issue and we do challenge testing to see what your body load is of mercury yeah. and there's good evidence for this but again this is not something that most doctors look at or do right and that's what we do in functional medicine so different at the ultra wellness center where we treat all sorts of patients like this and we see when we start to pull the hood back and look underneath, we see an incredible array of things that actually are treatable. Right, right. So for her, her her inorganic mercury, which is telling us how much mercury is coming from those amalgams, was really high. So I said to her, you know what, you need to we need to work on getting these fillings, these mercury amalgams. They call them silver fillings, but they're yeah. actually mercury. Yeah. Right. <laughs> safely removed. So safely, which I yeah. think is important. Yeah. You know, somebody, you don't want to just yank them all out without using precautions, right? Yeah. So like a dam, a dental dam in the mouth, oxygen. High speed suction. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, I had a patient, well, not a patient, uh, uh, a doctor uh, who talks about this it was a, sort of a chronic fatigue doctor. And he's yeah. started, you know, wanted to get the mercury out of his mouth. And he had a lot of it. And he went to the dentist and they didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. And he ended up getting heart failure. Oh, wow. From the mercury poisoning. Yeah. Which which is actually documented in literature. It's one of the causes mm -hmm. of heart failure. 
Um, so you have to do it safely. You have to go yep. to a biological dentist or an integrative dentist. Uh, there's a website called IAOMT.org yep. where you can see people who've been certified to do it properly to make sure you don't just go and can rip these things out because it can be really bad for you. Yeah, you want to work with somebody, I think, on this, especially if it's, if it's a big issue for you because you also want to make sure the body is supported yeah. to detoxify. Yeah. Like the body has this tremendous ability to detoxify. It's set up to get rid of these toxins we're exposed to. You know, as you mentioned, some people are better at it than others. You yeah, know, I some, suck at it. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> But, but but all of us can support our natural body's ability to detoxify, yeah. right? By drinking good water, having regular urination, making sure we're having regular bowel movements, eating a lot of fiber, sweating with oh, sauna it, and it, it, exercise. Uh, yeah, poop, pee, perspire. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like that, poop, pee, perspire. Yeah, so so we, we you wanna support that. And for some people, depending on what their levels are like. So for this woman, her levels were really high and she wasn't, very she wasn't well when she first came to see me so so we needed to support her a little bit more yeah. you know we actually gave her uh, some NAC N acetylcysteine which helps the body with production of glutathione which is the main detoxifier yep. in the body yeah I actually gave her glutathione I gave her IV as well as liposomal glutathione to help her body detoxify and mobilize these toxins and to help her through that process of getting rid of this the silver in her mouth and that really helps the immune system too i always find that so yeah. fascinating yeah. right when i first yeah. learned about the connection with the detoxification system and the immune system so when when you really support the detoxification system then somebody's immune system works better yeah and so, you know, that was very helpful. And we, we do those IVs all the time at the Ultra Wellness Center. Yeah. And it really helps with, with mobilizing heavy yeah. metals and, and toxins from the body. And of course, we focus on those cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, which really also, they, they have glucosinolates in them, which help the body with production of glutathione. Right? These amazing plant chemicals that act yep. like medicine in the body, right? Right, yeah, it's <clears throat> phytonutrients that help the body with production of the glutathione, which is this amazing detoxifier, this substance that helps the body detoxify. And then we use fibers and binders in the gut so you don't reabsorb it, right? Right. 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 So for her, we actually, her levels were at a point where we, we definitely had to use some binders um, to help them come, you know, to get down safely. But when you're doing that with, you want to work with a practitioner who really yeah, knows yeah, how to do that. Yeah, you have to be trained in functional medicine. And we yeah. do this at the Ultra Wellness Center. We've been doing it forever. And I, I personally had mercury poisoning. Yep. I talked about it before, but I had cognitive impairment. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. My memory was terrible. Yep. I literally was reading my kids a book at night and I couldn't remember what I was reading. I just could like read it out loud, but I actually couldn't understand it. I was yeah. like, I literally had a broken brain and, uh, and it was the mercury. And so it, it's, it's so impactful for so many people. And I've seen this over and over again. Um, and, and then you have to learn how to do it right. And all the things you're talking about, we have a very specific mm -hmm. methodology that basically takes out the bad stuff and puts in the good stuff. Yep. And so you, you support the body's natural system. So fibers and yep. the right foods to help detoxify and the right nutrients like selenium and zinc. And, yep. uh, you know, all these things are really so necessary in N-acetylcysteine and lipoic acid. And we use all these supplements and yep. diet and sometimes even medication to help get the body to rid itself of these metals. Yep. But it has profound effects. For me, it did. Yeah. And this patient uh, that you saw. It was amazing. You know, she stopped getting sick so often and then most most important for her is her cognition really improved. She that brain fog went away. She she wasn't um, having a hard time when she'd walk into a room and forgetting what she was doing there. You know she she really was she was noticing that her recall was better and you know that he, she just felt more clear in the head and um, it was really exciting to see. Yeah, so true. I mean, I remember this patient I had was like about seventy five eighty. And she was, you know, a very prominent woman in her community, was on the boards of many boards and, and fairly wealthy and um, was just struggling. And she was told that she had early dementia and there was nothing mm -hmm. she could do about it. And I actually tested her and she had uh, normal B12 and folate, but she had, when we checked these things called homocysteine and methylonic mm -hmm. acid, which are special tests yep. to look at the function of these nutrients, function, yes. uh, they were terrible. And so I gave yeah. her a B12 shot and some high dose of folate, and she literally just came right back online, her depression, yeah. her fatigue, and her memory loss went away. And about five years after I got a call from her, I'm like, I was like, oh boy, maybe she's not doing good. And I had her on my schedule and I, I talked to her and she's like, oh, Dr. Hyman, I just wanted to find out what do I need to do because I'm going to Bhutan trekking and I want to know what I need to take before I go. 
<laughs> Yay. And I was like, what? And, you know, I, I see this over and over. And I think yes. that, um, you know, we talked about a few things like insulin resistance. We talked about heavy metals. Yep. But, you know, dementia is simply the name of symptoms of memory loss. Mm-hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't tell you what's causing it. Right. You know, people say, oh, you have memory loss. You have dementia. That's what's causing it. No, no, no. That's just the name yep. of the problem of you can't remember anything. Right. Right. And, and functional medicine helps to figure out the why. And, and if you have a diagnosis, then you need to start thinking about the cause. Yep. And in dementia, it's a lot of things. It's, it's like we talked about. It could be the yep. metals. It could be the insulin resistance. It could be the nutritional deficiencies. Yep. It could be Lyme disease. Right. Like Chris Christopherson right. had dementia and treated with Lyme disease treatment right. and he got better. Yep. I've seen many cases like that. Yep. Infections, it, it right. It could be mold in your environment. Yes. It could be, you know, other toxic influences. So there's, there's uh, so much we know about this disease now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if we applied it, we could help so many of these millions of people who are suffering. And mm-hmm. I think people just need to understand that, that it's not just about getting the diagnosis and getting your affairs in order anymore. We actually have so much we can do. And at Cleveland Clinic, we've been working with the, the memory center there, the Lurio Center there. So excited about these ideas. They're implementing them. We're seeing this in academic centers Great. like in New York City with Richard Isaacson, which is funded by partly Maria Shriver, whose father had dementia. So we're seeing this incredible advances, but it's just people aren't getting access to it. So And right. at the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts, where we treat these kinds of problems, we see incredible results. And we check all these things. We check metals. We check your yep. gut. We check your insulin resistance. We yep. check your nutritional levels. We check for Lyme if needed. We check yep. for mold. Yep. And these are the things that you know your traditional doctor just doesn't do. And then we lo- learn how to fix the diet. And we talked about mm-hmm. you know things like intermittent fasting or ketogenic diets or caloric restriction. All these things can help actually help the brain. And then we figure out what foods are good for the brain, like the fats, and we apply that. And then, of course, you know, we'll, we'll actually treat the specific things as needed, right? If, yeah. if people need different things. And we focus on sleep and stress and gut and diet. So it's, it's really a comprehensive approach that uh, you just don't get when you, you, know, you go to the doctor and you say, I'm having memory issues. Yeah. And it's terrifying for people because they think there's nothing you can do. And I just want people to have hope that actually there is a lot you can there's do. so much we can do, I mean, you right? Don't wanna, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'm sort of skeptical that you can have an impact when people are pretty far gone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's better to get it earlier, like when you're pre-dementia or even before that. But uh, I, I just want to end with a quick story, which is of a, a nursing home in Cleveland where the family got very focused on my book, Ultra Mind Solution, and Dr. Bredesen's book, The End of Alzheimer's, talking about lifestyle, diet, various things with their patients. And these were patients who had moderate to severe Alzheimer's. And they were in a nursing home. And they said, you know, they hired a chef they got all the gluten dairy out all the sugar processed food they fed them whole foods and within two weeks these patients were coming back online Mm -hmm. they were talking where they hadn't been talking they were having less you know need for restraints and less need for this and that and medications and uh, i mean they weren't cured but their cognitive function got significantly better uh, and i see this over and over again so I, i just want people to really feel like it's not a hopeless case that there is something we can do and that and that there's a way forward to think through this together. And I, I think, uh, you know, people are struggling. We, we do this all the time at the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts. We have a great team of providers, you know, four doctors, two PAs, a whole bunch of nutritionists and great mm-hmm. team. And, and we're really good at actually navigating through these complex stories and coming up with what to do and, and how to help people. I agree. It's just, it's just a fun place to work because there's so much, we see so much improvement all the time. And uh, it's it's really fun to, to dive deep and figure out for that individual person what is going on. Yeah, people say, oh, it's a miracle. So, it's not a miracle. It's just applying good science. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Know, functional medicine, is for those who are listening, is is not um, a specialty. Uh, it's, it's a way of thinking about complex diseases using a systems approach and getting to the root cause and actually thinking about how the body is one integrated system because often you go to the cardiologist, the neurologist, the rheumatologist, the gastroenterologist, and like they're all treating their body part, but it's one system. And so yep. functional medicine helps us really deal with that. And we see amazing, amazing results. So Liz, uh, Dr. Bohm, thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of House Call. It's a mini episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. I'd love everybody to share with your friends and family on social media. I'd love them to leave a comment if you can. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And I'll catch you next time on The Doctor's Pharmacy. Thank you, Mark.